Hello, my name is Rosie and I work at the Natural History Museum. Today, as part of Dinosaurs Online, we will be speaking again to Ranger Stu to learn more about some of the animals that he looks after. We'll also be learning some signs together for some of the different animals that we see. Why don't you sign with us at home? So hi Stu, how are you today? Hi Rosie, great thank you. It's good to see you again. It's nice to see you. After last time we spoke, we had lots of people that wrote to us and sent us some drawings and some questions like this one that we have here from Myra. She's done a wonderful drawing of an owl. Well done, Myra, that's great. And she has a question for you. Did dinosaurs make the same noises as birds? So that's a great drawing, Myra, and an awesome question. So we're not really sure what sounds dinosaurs made, but by looking at their skulls, we can tell that they made loud noises like bellows, and it's likely that they made snorts and squeaks and other noises similar to birds today. That's great. And we have another drawing here as well from Jacob. And this is of Pinky the Tenric. He liked learning about these animals that are definitely not hedgehogs. And he has a question. Can he get one as a pet? And where did you get it from? Okay, so and again, another great drawing there, Jacob, and another good question. So I wouldn't recommend Tenrix as pets for everybody. They need specialist heating, specialist diet, specialist lighting um, to really keep them happy and healthy. But the other question of where we got them from. So all of our animals are captive bred. None of them are taken from the wild. They all live at Seed Nature Centre, which is a zoo that I co-own in Hertfordshire with Nick Spellman. And like all zoos, we have to follow, follow guidelines to make sure that the animal's welfare is our highest priority. So some animals, like Pinky the Tenric, we actually bred here ourselves. Some animals, such as the northern white-faced owl, Zambezi, are from other zoos. And occasionally we take on rescues such as Kendra, the Burmese python. And Kendra sadly was not looked after very well by her previous owner. And when we got her, she was eight years old and about eight feet long. But she's now 15 years old and about 13 feet long. And she lives in a very large enclosure in our tropical house. So Jacob, when we reopen, why not come up and visit us and uh, maybe meet Kendra and some of the keepers too. We also occasionally rescue mini beasts. And uh, last year we actually took on 75 giant African land snails. Wow. So what is a mini beast? Are they very small animals? Okay, so a mini beast is another name for invertebrate. So that means an animal without a backbone. Whereas if an animal has a backbone, it is a vertebrate, just like all you guys watching at home. And mini beasts range in size from tiny microscopic creatures all the way up to the colossal squid, which is 12 metres long. So, Rosie, would you like to meet some invertebrates that live here at Cedars Nature Centre? Yes, please. So invertebrates are animals with no bones. I think they might be some of my favourite animals. So who will we meet first? Let's meet the amazing spider. So you may have seen this tarantula at one of our Dornosaurs events. This is Tallulah and she is something called a Chilean rose tarantula. And just like all spiders, she can bite, but her venom is very mild. So generally, spiders do not bite straight away. The first thing they do is they warm the predator by flicking hairs off of their abdomen. And if these hairs get into the predator's eyes, they can cause temporary blindness. If they get into the predator's skin, they can itch. And if the predator still does not go away, then they rear up and show you their fangs. And then as a last result, if the predator still doesn't go away, that's when they bite. 
Wow, looks amazing. So I know that lots of people at home are frightened of spiders. Are you frightened of spiders at home? I'm not. I love spiders. But Stu, are they dangerous? Do we need to be careful? So Chilean rose tarantulas are a very friendly species. And as long as they are handled gently and with care, then uh, they're, they're very, very calm, relaxed animals. Oh, that's great. The sign for spider is spider. Can you sign spider, spider? I love looking for spiders. Okay, Stu, what animal will we meet next? The next animal we're going to meet, I definitely do not want to hold. So this is Mrs. Stingy, and Mrs. Stingy is a tricolored burrowing scorpion, and she is much more venomous than Tallulah the tarantula. And sometimes we bring her along to our Dornosaurs events, but she always stays in the safety of her travel box. So today you're going to get a bit more of an up close view. <laughs> wow, it's really cool to see her so close. But why are they so dangerous? So scorpions use their claws and their sting for defense and to capture their prey. And some scorpion venom is extremely dangerous, whereas some scorpion venom is very mild. And generally, the, the scorpion's claws, the larger the scorpion's claws and the smaller the sting, the less dangerous they are. Whereas the smaller the scorpion's claws and the larger their sting, the more dangerous they are. Although don't hold me to that and uh, go on holiday and pick one up. We do not want that. Uh, Rosie, would you like to see something really interesting? Oh, yes, please. OK, so I'm going to get my UV light. Because scorpions actually fluoresce under ultraviolet light. We're not really sure why this is, but scientists believe that it is a substance found in their exoskeleton that reacts with the UV light and causes them to fluoresce. And unfortunately, it is one of their downfalls because in the uh, wild, people go over the rainforest floor with a big UV light. They fluoresce this bright blue and then people pick them up and take them away because some people keep them as pets or they pick them up and take them away because some people like to eat them. Yummy. Oh, OK. So I know that spiders have eight legs, but how many legs does a scorpion have? I wonder if we can count together. Got one, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven eight. eight. Eight legs. <laughs> Thank you, Stu. The sign for scorpion is scorpion. Can you sign scorpion? Scorpion. Scorpions have eight legs. Okay, Stu, what animal is next? Well, our next animal has no legs. Okay, so this is Mr. Snail, although snails are hermaphrodites, which means that they are both male and female. And Mr. Snail is a giant African land snail. And believe it or not, he's actually going to get much bigger than this he will eventually grow to about this big. What a chunky snail. So if snails have no legs, how do they move about? So snails, as you say, have no legs, but they do have one foot. And this here is their foot. I'll bring you a bit closer, there you go. So they have one foot and they do everything with their foot. They eat food for their foot and they poo for their foot. And if you find a snail in your gardens or outside, uh, if you pick it up, make sure you put it on something like this, a bit of bark 
or wet your hands beforehand with water because the salt from our hands will actually burn the foot of a snail. Ah, okay. I love looking for snails in the park near my house. So the sign for snail is snail. Can you sign snail? Snail. Look at that big snail. So, Stu, what animal will we meet last? So our last animal is a bit of a treat. It is an animal that I have never brought to Dornosaurs before. So this is Twiggy, and Twiggy is a female jungle nymph, and they are the heaviest stick insect species on Earth. Oh, wow, I, I like Twiggy. Um, so how many legs does an insect have? So insects have six legs and we can count them. If you stay still. One, two, three, four, five, six. And female jungle nymphs have these massive spines on the backs of their legs and they use them for defense. So they'll keep them out straight like this and then slam them onto a predator's snout or limb and sort of pierce that predator's skin with those spines. So this, although obviously, as you can see, this one's a very friendly one. Um, this is a female jungle nymph, and they're very impressive, very large, bright green. Rosie, would you like to meet a male jungle nymph? Oh, yes, please. We're going to swap Twiggy for Stickman. So hopefully you can see Stickman. I'm going to bring him a bit closer. Can you see him there? So Stickman is a male jungle nymph and they're a lot smaller, they're brown and they're extremely good at camouflage. There you go. Um, and believe it or not, we actually struggle sometimes to find them when they're amongst their bramble in their enclosure. And we've actually bred these guys. We're very lucky. We've bred them and had lots of eggs from them. Believe it or not, jungle nymphs lay the largest egg of any insect and it can actually take them 14 months to hatch. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So the sign for stick insect is stick insect. Can you sign stick insect, stick insect? The female stick insect is green. The male stick insect is brown. Thank you, Stu, and thank you to all of the animals. We hope to see you again. Yes, thank you, Rosie. Bye-bye. And thank you, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Stu. Wow, that was so exciting. I loved seeing all of the animals. My favourite was the spider. What was your favourite animal? That's almost it from us for today. But don't forget, we have some dinosaur activities on our website. We also have a new letter from our friend, Adrian. And you can write to us too. Send us your drawings and your questions. And the address for that will be shown at the end. Or you can use hashtag Dornosaurs on Twitter. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.